Bismillah, assalamu alaikum. And today we have a much anticipated podcast. We got the young man, Alfie Best, a man that's become Muslim just in the last year, runs his own business. His dad is a billionaire, a traveler community. We go through his life, how he became Muslim, relationship with his family, all of that. Make sure you watch the whole podcast. Peace. I want to be the best Muslim I can, and I would like to. To I'd like to. I. It makes me feel good to see when other people have reverted because I, I'm thinking like you don't realise how good of steps you have just made in the right direction. Like you, you don't know it yet, mm-hmm. but you have just helped yourself massively. You know, like sure. there's going to be tests come regardless of what religion you are, anyways. Mm-hmm. And yes, you're going to be tested. No, it might not be easy, mm-hmm. but for me. I just, I wouldn't worry. Yeah. If, if somebody asked my life advice, it's actually quite simple now. I'd say, have you read the Quran? You know, I'd start there. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. You're looking suave, Akhi. Thank you very much. I do try. Uh, who, who shows you how to dress or is it your own things? Do you know what? I surprised my own self. I dressed myself, I have done for the last 20 odd years, I suppose. Very nice, mashallah. I'll start with that. Thank you very much. Moving on, Akhi, you're Muslim. You're all over the place. Alhamdulillah. In what sense do you mean all over the place? In a good way or a bad way? (laughs) Exactly. I was just about to say that as well, man. (laughs) Hey, positive, negative is all good, Akhi. Don't worry, man. Positive, positive, positive. But um, from the angle of obviously you're Muslim, mashallah. Mm -hmm. So let's start from there and we can go into the other stuff, your business, we know your dad, mashallah, many things are out there. So with your Islam, how's that started? Where did that come from? To be honest with you, I've I've said this story a load of times, but it's obviously not going to change. Of course. So I'm just in a different environment on a different podcast, but it's the same story. Of course. And I will explain it. So, so me and my friend, Danny Dean, we went out for a day out on my dad's helicopter. And he had to come back because his mum was taking her shahada here at Lewisham Mosque. Yeah. So I said to Danny on the way, I said, can I come in and see what it's all about? And I never had no intentions. I didn't know nothing about Islam before. That day. That day or this, before I even walked into that mosque. So I come in with Danny's mum. Oh, I've, I've jumped a bit the story. We went and picked his Danny's mum up. So from the airport, pick Danny's mum up, then come straight to the mosque. So I've asked, can I come in? I said, like, will I be welcome in there? And Danny said, yeah, you will. Like, they, they, they will embrace you in there. And I mm. thought, well, I will come in for a little look. Come in, watch uh, Danny's mum take her shada. Danny cried, mm. you know. And that that is a point I haven't touched base okay. on, which that, that did mean something to me when... You saw him crying. He's a bit of a role model to me. Of course. You know, and when you see someone get that emotional, it must mean something, mm. you know. And like I've said previously, I felt something in the mosque that I've never felt in any earthly place or anywhere at all. And that's when I looked to the imam and said, can I take a, a, a Quran? He gave me a Quran written out in English. Mm. I read it twice and then decided that yeah, it was the right thing to do. It all it all made a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sense. Mm. It only made sense. Reading the Quran? Yeah. Okay. So I want to take him a bit back, Alfie. So, yeah, you know, you've said this story a number of times. Firstly, thank you for coming, taking the time and coming down to, no the, problem. to, 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 the, to the podcast. May Allah reward you. You know, the when you walked into the masjid, because look, our masjid is not fancy. The mosque is not fancy. No. It's a simple mosque in a simple area. That first step, yeah, that you took into the mosque. People, some people are praying. Some people are reading Quran. What did you feel in that first step in, inside the mosque? This is before going to the back and witnessing Danny's mom's taking shahada. What did you think? What was your feeling at that stage? I've never actually thought about that, to be honest, because when I actually felt something was when I was hearing you. For Danny's mum, for her to take the shahada, the words she was, or, or the, what she had to repeat, that's when I really felt something for the word, me. The Arabic words, basically. Just, I was, I was sat, my mind was as if I was talking to somebody. Mm. That's how it felt for, uh, for me. Yeah. So, you know what, in terms of, I'm, I can't read minds, you know, I'm not saying that, but you walked in and I'm sensing from your looking at you, you're already thinking, because you seem like, you're looking at things, 
But at the same time, your mind is somewhere else in reflection. Of course. That's when you've come into the mosque. Then, of course, the shahada takes place. Fine. The other thing was now, we had a discussion with Danny's mom. Danny's mom took shahada. I don't think it was complicated, complicated words. It's a very simple kind of like, uh, how do you say, discussion we had. What resonated with you in that discussion? Was it the word Allah? Was it about God? Was it about Prophet Muhammad? Was it some something about the Quran? Or was it just Danny kind of like being emotional, mom's taking shahada after me? What was going through your mind when that discussion was? Again, I was looking at you and I can see again that same thing. He's reflecting. He's thinking, you weren't smiling. But you know, I could tell you're concentrating, mm. which means you were thinking and reflecting. Can you, it's taking you a bit back now. Can you remember that, that moment? Yeah, I can. It felt like I connected with something because it wasn't just mental. I, I physically felt something. Mm. Okay. That's what it was for me. And then there's a number of things after this, what I'm experiencing, which I've never experienced. Okay. That's in churches, anywhere. You've anywhere, been in church anywhere, of course. Mm. Of course. And no, no, no earthly place whatsoever. Yeah, because obviously people watching it are going to say, well, what is this feeling? It, was it serenity? Was it calm? What was it? Like, was it an emotion to cry? You know, like when you say that feeling. Mm, it didn't make me emotional. It made me think. And what I thought to myself when I had this feeling was, is this what I'm missing? Because mm. there's loads of itches I've tried to scratch. Mm -hmm. But never brought about there. But the never ever. Wanted. And I thought maybe this is this is what I'm what I'm missing. Mm. But in that, what I'm trying to ask is, what was that feeling? Like, if someone, if you was to put a word to it, is it like, I felt serenity. I felt contentment within myself. I felt calm in the place. Was, like, was there a word you would put to it? Well, I can only explain exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. I had goose pimples go mm. from the back it's of my neck. Right. Up. As you're hearing him speaking. Exactly. Mm. And at the same time, as I'm feeling this, I'm thinking to myself, is this what I'm missing? Mm. Is this the help that I need? Okay, so the goosebump feeling, basically. Absolutely. And like I've said before, I wasn't in a bad, I wasn't in a dark place. And that's why it feels so special to me. It wasn't like, oh, I'm in a dark place. I need to try and find way a way out. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Everything was going good. very good. Mm. But there was just something missing, mm -hmm. which was everything. Of course, that one thing that's you know? missing is everything that's exactly. missing. Exactly. Oh, if we just step back towards now, before becoming a Muslim, mm -hmm. what was your perception of Islam before? I didn't know a lot about it at all, to be honest. I had a lot of friends that was born Muslims, and we've I've had a very good connection with a lot of my friends that uh, was born Muslims. I never really, I don't like to make assumptions about things, to be honest, um, but. It's always intrigued me, but not enough for me to take the step forward to look into it. Were you, uh, you know, some non-Muslim, not all, some, they don't know about Islam. They haven't engaged with Muslim, but they hate Islam. Mm. You know, they call them Islamophobes. Were you at that stage at any given time? Never. Never. I'm not with any religion or, or, or I do not have a view on how somebody wants to live their life. Okay, okay. Or what they want to believe in, that's completely up to them. Yeah. I've found Islam, Islam's right for me, and I believe it's right for everybody. But I wouldn't go ramming that down people's throats. They okay. either do or they don't. Mm -hmm. The way I see it is it's their loss, not mine. I found mm -hmm. the right religion. Okay. Now, inshallah, I can't remember. I think Dom got mad. Dom took sh sh Shahada the mosque. You know Dom as well. And I can't remember when... But he got married at the mosque. His mm -hmm. nikah was at the masjid. Might have been a few weeks after Danny's mum taking shahada. But I remember being out with Dom. Danny was there. And I think Danny was saying, Alfie's messaging me. We were out eating dinner. So he said, Alfie's messaging me and he wants to take his shahada. He's reading the Quran and he's saying, I've stopped here, but you know what? I'm ready. So you took the Quran what was going through your mind while you're reading. And I also remember one of your podcasts uh, you, you said you came out of school, reading wasn't your thing, but when you got hold of the Quran, it was easy to read and everything made sense. What was going through your mind initially starting to read the Quran? The Quran's actually the first book that I've ever read from start to finish. Mm. The first, the, the only book, the first and the only book I've ever read. Now, during Ramadan, 
I used to read a couple of pages. Now, I don't read it as much as when I was first taking my Shahada or, or before I was taking my Shahada because I wanted to educate myself and I wanted to know what it what it was about. And I actually read it twice. So I have read it twice and I'm, now I read pages uh, uh, and parts that I remember and I try to read it as much as I can, which unfortunately now isn't often, but during Ramadan, Eid, I like to read it. It makes me feel good to read it. And answering your question, what was I thinking? I was thinking how relatable it is, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. How I could relate to a a lot what is written Mm -hmm. in the Quran. Mm, Amazing, amazing. But I just, uh, I remember, I wasn't practicing. And I remember at the age of 17, a guy gave me translation of the Quran in English, just like you. And that word you use, relatable. I could see and read my story and what Allah is saying. That's one of the miracles of Allah's words, the Quran, meaning it's for every individual, it's for all times, and it's relatable. There were some verses that I think Danny, Danny asked, oh, he showed me, uh, um, Alfie doesn't understand, understand these verses, they're not making sense or something. Do you remember what those were? Anything that was kind of like, okay, I need a bit more clarification? There was a couple of places in, or a couple of pages or, or, or verses that, of course, I was going to struggle to understand. I'm not a, 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 the best reader anyway. Okay. But I still managed to get through it from start to finish, even yeah. if I had to start a page again. From, mm-hmm. And, and, and the pro- my reading's not too bad, but it's actually understanding. And that's what happened with me in the Quran. I understood it. Yeah. Like for me to like, if I was to read Harry Potter, for example, not that I want to put it into comparison, but it's the only way I can compare it. If I'm in two pages in, I've already forgot what happened. Mm. When I was fifty pages in, I was fully aware of what's happening and what's gone on, etc. Okay, subhanallah, that's amazing. Danny, Danny's mum. Danny, after giving the mum Quran would meet me occasionally every few weeks and say, look, you know, she's read it once, she's read it twice. And then on the day of the Shahada, I remember when you were there, I said, oh, you know, Mama, I heard you read it twice. She goes, no, no, I read it four times. Yeah, that's before taking the Shahada. You read it two times completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just moving forward, Alfie, from that day of Shahada now, again, the Shahada, who was at the Shahada? There was your... I think some of your dad's staff members, yeah, yeah. they were there, some Muslim ones. Uh, there was, uh, what's the brother, man? Lord, Lord Ali. Lord Alim. Lord Alim. Lord Alim was there. Uh, the kids of Prince, Prince, Prince Nassim. Prince sons. Nassim's sons were there. Prince yeah, Nassim yeah. was supposed to be there. They said, yeah. look, you know, he went, he was in Dubai or some yeah, way. Yeah. You know, so it was a big day. Yeah. Yeah. It was big a massive day. day for me. Life, life changed. Life changed. Well, they all come to the mosque. All mm-hmm. came to the mosque. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny was there. I think Dom was there. How did you feel? At the time of Shahada, Declaration of Faith, after you've taken the Shahada, while you're taking the Shahada, and after you've taken Shahada, how did you feel? It was September, it's coming up to a year, and that, that year has flew. It feels mm-hmm. not long ago that I actually took my Shahada, like I had. Start of a day. That it, it feels very, 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 very recently, and it, 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 now it wasn't, you know, we're coming up to a year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've done one full Ramadan. You know, um, how did I feel? Did you feel for a moment it's not the right thing? No, not never ever since the day that now, before I took my Shahada, I obviously questioned myself and I had a lot of people on my case, the very few people I did tell, because to be honest, I didn't tell many people, I just went and done it. Because I think that's the best thing to do. Is to, if it's the right thing for you, then go and do it. You shouldn't let these people get inside your head. And that's when you start cross-questioning and could come up with uh, uh, something that's wrong. But I, before I took my shahada, that is when I did have second thoughts. Like, is this the right thing? Ain't it the right thing? Ever since I have taken my shahada every single day, there's some there's something that happens every single day where I realise, wow, this is the best decision I've ever made in my life. Okay, alhamdulillah. There was a worry. There was a worry of maybe how your family might react. I even remember, I think, before the shahada saying, look, Alfie, do you want it done privately? Uh, maybe you don't want it recorded because maybe your family members, maybe I think dad, I think specifically mm-hmm. I mentioned, dad might not be happy with it. Um, you said, no, 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 
let's just do it. Let's just do it properly. Let's record it. Uh, what was the worry initially from your concerning family members and maybe dad? Well, I I know how all my family members' brain works, and it's the fear of the unknown. Like, what has led you to this? Why do you want to do this? And as time has gone on, they totally understand. Mm-hmm. And like, even some friends of mine was like people that knew me from being born. It come at a shock because, like I said, I didn't really talk about it. I'd done my reciting by myself, read the book and or read the Quran, and it just made even so much more sense. Okay, okay. But it's just, it was more so I didn't want people, because there's a lot of people out there that want to try and steer you the wrong way and tell you what they believe, and they want to force that upon you. And that's why I was, you know, I didn't want to push it out there too much, but I thought, right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand by it. It's my decision. Nobody else's opinion matters. Now, I don't want to disappoint anybody, but at the same time, in reality, there's only one person that matters, and that's God. Alhamdulillah. Did you let dad, family members know before that you're going to become a Muslim take shahada? Did you let them know this? Did you have that discussion with them? Um, I had the discussion with my mum, and I did have the discussion with my dad, and what my dad exactly said to me was, are you sure this is what you want to do? Now, to be honest with you, again, that is not questions I really wanted to answer or be asked that question, but from a dad's point of view, I do understand why, especially someone that doesn't know, he hasn't recited the Quran, or he hadn't up until this point. Now, I don't know, he may have done now Mm. to find out, because like I said, it's a fear of the unknown, which was... um, Mm. Which was which 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 would have played on his mind a little bit, and me and my dad was actually on a podcast together, and I it was with James English, and I, James English asked me, "Do you think that you've become a better person?" And my dad answered it beautifully, and something that stuck. He said, "Because I don't believe I was a bad person before. Hmm. I always try to do good. Okay. I always, that that's just my intentions. Before I was a Muslim, I always want to do good, mm-hmm. which is why I relate to Islam so much because it promotes that. Mm-hmm. And my dad said, "I don't think it's made you a better person. I think it's enhanced you as a person, which was a which was a lovely, beautiful way." And when he said it, I was like, "Oh, what is he going to say? <laughs> do you know what I mean?" I thought, "Oh God!" I thought, "What's he going to say?" And then he said, "No, it's it's enhanced you as a person," which was a pretty straightforward, beautiful, simple way of explaining it. And when he yeah. and once again, I thought, yeah, you're 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 right. Mm, amazing. I think one. I don't know if it was Rana. Rana. I think said me. You must have prayed in Central Mosque in Regent's Park. Yeah. And you took it was a Juma Friday prayer. Yeah. You took a picture. I think Rana sent me, and your father commented. Yeah. I said like I'm proud of my son. Then the choice that he's made. Mm. So that this is after the Shahada, yeah. after you've gone to Friday prayer. So it shows you look. Okay, you know what. Even though, okay, he's not a Muslim, that's not his choice, but at least I'm accepting my son being a Muslim and I'm proud of his decision and choice. Absolutely. Mm. And he, he accepted it straight mm. away. Like I say, I'm sure whether he admits it or not, there was a little bit of fear there because, like I say, it's the unknown that mm. bothered him. And I didn't talk about it too much. I didn't really want to talk about it too much. I made my own mind up and I think that's all that mattered. Mm. Okay, alhamdulillah. I think, one second. No, go ahead. I was going to say, obviously, we have many youngsters that watch this, many non-Muslims. So from the perspective of giving insight to Islam, from your perspective, not my perspective, not Imam's perspective, what is it that you say you relate with? Because a lot of people, again, we're in a Western world. Obviously, we know in Africa, we know in the Middle East, people relate with it, people live by it. But in the West, we know due to many issues that's happened in the past, you know, the misconceptions, they will look at it like... It has full of fighting and glorifying this and glorifying that. But you're saying you read it from page to page twice. Mm-hmm. So for you, what was relatable about it? Are there some few points you can say, you know, I relate with this and I relate with this that you can, from the top of your mind, show yeah. people? Yeah, the morals and the discipline. Mm. From what That's what I relate to. Mm. So what kind of aspects did you see on there? Was it like telling you to wake up at certain times? Is it when it talks about the prophets, their, their discipline, what is it? Well, the fasting. The Quran is full of stories. The fasting, mm, the Ramadan. not being a drunk pig. Mm, mm-hmm. These are points that I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what actually that stuck, stood out. You know, you. not to eat swine. Mm-hmm. This is what that stood. I well, well to, to be honest with you, that 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 there is not relatable to me. To not to eat bacon. I used to love 
eating pork. I yeah. will not lie. Prior, I haven't, prior to Islam. I will never. Yeah, prior. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. prior. I've never ate. Since then. Never. never Funny thing, Alfie, one of the brothers took shahada. So after about a year or two, he goes to me, listen, the big, you know, fitna, fitna means test. Mm. The biggest test for me is not eating bacon. <laughs> the biggest test, I can't eat bacon. Yeah. You find that difficult because you say, I really like the taste of bacon. Mm. So, yeah, some people have different tests. <laughs> yeah, I I've, I've, I've found it actually quite easy, to be honest. But like I say, answering your questions, it's 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 the moral the and, and the respect and the discipline that it tries to guide you. Mm. Do you understand where I'm coming yeah. from? Yeah, yeah. Now, I've come to a bit of a, where well, you've asked me, I've come to a, like I've hit a little bit of a wall, but as the conversation goes on, I'll be like, oh, as a matter of fact, yeah. I can touch base on that. Or, yeah. Oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I yeah. can touch base on that. So from the background, you, you said you was Christian, right? Yes. So again, someone may ask, well, Christians also have morals. Well, I don't know. I've never read the Bible. You've never read the Bible? No, never okay. interested in one. So from a Christian perspective, is your family Christian? Yes. Dad, everyone? Yeah, well... Or would they say they're Christian based they're on not they're raised they're, up to that? Exactly, yeah. but they're not, they don't practice. They don't read the never book, they never don't do pray. I remember going to church and went to church and went there for a wedding. Mm, okay. So you, even though you're Christian based, you're not necessarily practicing Christians. You're not, you haven't read the book no. in and out like you've read the Quran, no. et cetera, et cetera. No. Okay, so you couldn't really make a comparison to say the morals in Christianity says this, Islam says this, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there will be similarities. Of course there you know, is. Between different kind of like religions, especially like Christianity, Judaism, Islam. At the same time, when you come with like morality now, mm. let's say it's the Church of England now. Let's say Christianity as it is today. Mm. Where Where is Christianity or the Church of England in terms of morality and following what Allah or God Almighty has legislated? Mm. You know, they're changing laws of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So... You know, where does it stand for morality? Of course, from our sense, to... we would argue they don't. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. of course, I was, for me, it was more the perspective of if he did grow up in a Christian background, yeah. was their comparisons. Because even in the Quran, Allah says, when mm. you speak to the people of the, the book, which is the Christians and the Jews, come to common terms first before debating what's the difference between you two. Come to common terms first. What do you agree on? Yeah. You, bring, you agree on one God, you agree on all the prophets, you agree on there's judgment day, that there's hellfire, that there's Jannah. Okay, now what do we do? Disagree on? You will find that we agree much more on things mm -hmm. than we disagree on a few minute things. Okay, you say Jesus is the Son of God, but well, we say to you, no, Jesus can't be the Son of God. Yeah, but even that, Alfie, just on that point, concept of God that he's mentioning. So compare other religions and Islam. Our concept of God, Allah, not a man, not a woman, no partners. You can't put an image to Allah. Allah's too great and magnificent. How did that resonate with you? Yeah. Or did that play a part in your shahada? Look, uh, I've spoken to Danny, I've spoken to some of my mates. They're telling me about God. And you know what? This resonates with me. It's funny you should it's funny you should say that because actually, even being brought up a Christian like so I've never practiced ever. But I always believed that there is one God. And how it is in Islam, it was like I subconsciously believed that. Okay. Do, you under, do you understand where I'm coming yeah, yeah, from? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it makes sense. Like, exactly. There is one God. Yeah. There is, it's very simple. It's very simple. It's, it doesn't complicate it. And there's one God, there's a creator, you're the... And I know this is going to sound mad, but it kind of feels like I've been a Muslim my whole life, mm. but I just didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand where I'm that's coming from? That's not mad. That's, yeah, that's normal, actually. Because, because um, that's why we call reversion. We don't say conversion, we say reversion. To revert back to what was your essence. Yeah. You understand? We were all born to believe, like even my kids, if you ask a little three-year-old, four-year-old, like, where is God? Is there a God? Is there something that's created you? They, they, it they inherently is there. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah. They're not going to say God is there. Like if you say, where's God? No one's going to say on the ground. They're going to say it's above, in the sky, somewhere high. It's inherently within us to be good people, God-conscious people. You see people like I was listening to today, um, Russell Brand. Now, if you know the guy's history, you know he comes with a lot of baggage. But then as the years have gone on, he's, he's gone married this person, he slept with how many people he's taken, how many drugs, he was a drug addict, all of that stuff to come to the conclusion. And he, yeah, what, what, he made a very beautiful statement. He said, he said, when I was taking drugs and all of these things, I'm, I was looking for the same things I'm looking for now in spirituality. I was looking for serenity, peace, to get away from all of this, you know, headaches or 
stresses of life. But what I was doing is I was killing the vehicle that was in it, which was what? The body. You're killing the vehicle to get the serenity. When people take drugs and weed and whatever it is, they're trying to leave whatever atmosphere they're in to reach a different atmosphere that's nice and pleasant and all of that. But you were doing it by killing your soul. Whereas in Islam, in spirituality, we're doing the same thing, but we're not harming our body. We're enhancing the body. When we're fasting, we're doing something that enhances the body first. It kills off bad cells. You understand? It makes you conscious of the creator. It makes you appreciate that like, for those who fasted it for hours, you know, you ate for so many hours when you eat food, you appreciate the food. You take your time on that food. You understand me? When you pray Salah and you wake up certain times when the birds are chirping and you're praying, listening to the birds chirping, that's serenity. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? So when he made that statement, is it resonated with me in the fact that many people are seeking the same things that we're seeking. They're just going about it in a way that at the same time damages them. Whereas in Islam specifically, we're doing it in a way that only enhances you, not damages you. That makes sense. So yeah, and moving from that anyway, so you're Muslim now, mashallah. You've told your dad, you've told everyone you're Muslim. How has the non-Muslims and everyone else reacted? Obviously you got a good following on Instagram. What was the rapport like from people? The reception I got from the Muslim brothers, I'm sure you can well imagine, was beautiful. Beyond belief, couldn't mm. put it into words. There's obviously been some people out there that were kind of like, I'd like to say, sit on the fence and, you know, please for you, happy for you. And then there's also some people, Negative. there's no other saviour other than Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you know where I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that was the reception. I just, you got it from everywhere. But I am, was so confident, so happy that I made the right decision. And every day something points in the Back direction there. to say you have made the best decision mm. and as a matter of fact you know always people want to chuck up like i've said on many other podcasts oh, muslim terrorist yeah, yeah. and as i said on another podcast because there's a there's a lot in the quran that stood out to me which one thing was because obviously i was curious because i've been told in the quran oh, that it tells you to make sacrifices yeah, yeah, yeah. but it says to take the life of one to is do. to take the life of all yeah and vice versa you know mm. so where does that relate to terrorism? That, that's never that never gets mentioned, though. You know that verse never gets mentioned by the by the so called uh, Islamophobes that understand the Quran, but they can't read that one verse. And no. any verse they take is always out of context. So they might take a verse and say, "Okay, kill them wherever you find them." Okay, but what's the verse before that, bro? What does it talk about? What's the verse after that? It's talking about people that were subjugated for how many years had to leave their land, go to another land. Now those same people are coming to that land that they've moved to and they're saying, wherever you find these type of people, fight them. It's yeah. as simple as that. Something like France came over here. What are you going to do? Just sit on your ass and say, well, look, mate, we're Christians. So yeah, just take us over. It doesn't work like that. It's no. a natural state of man to defend yourself. It doesn't matter who it is. You're going to defend yourself. And that's what the Quran talks about. It's not a... Uh, slap your face on, on this side and then you turn your face on. It doesn't work like that. Islam is one of the one ways of life that's still alive today that stands up for his way of life. And I think personally, that's probably one of the main reasons many people are becoming Muslim. When they see the transgender issues, the gay issues, the whatever issues, and Islam is the only one saying, no, we're not about that. And everyone else is bringing up the blue flags and pink flags or whatever flags they have saying, no, you know, we're, we're tolerating this. Is the principle that Allah is telling you that this Quran is forever. It doesn't change just because a new guy has come or a new government has come. No, it doesn't change. The book is still the same book that it was when the Prophet ﷺ was alive. Do you get what I mean? And what people want today is they want you to change those words so that it agrees with the society. So every time society changes, the Quran has to change. Then it changes again and the Quran has to change, which basically the Bible has become. It's like any time government changes, you change. If tomorrow the government goes back to no gaze is wrong they'll say oh yeah actually yeah in the bible they'll say gaze is wrong does that make sense so i think from the perspective of the non-muslims who look into islam and are still fearful of it it seems like the tide is turned for me personally you've become muslim dan many brothers mashallah have become muslim many years ago you wouldn't even i wouldn't even thought of it to be if i'm being honest i wouldn't have thought white people in this country becoming muslim that's a far fetch for me. Mm -hmm. But just on that point, Alf, so in terms of, you know what, like um, something we asked Danny as well, you, you know, being white, what's your, 
Because remember, I think it was more a media that made it seem white people, Islam doesn't can't resonate with them. Mm-hmm. It's a foreign thing. It's an Eastern thing. It's an African thing. It's an Arab thing. Well, how would you kind of like relate with that? How would you answer that? Yeah, Meaning, can you now see, okay, you know, actually, you know what? You can be any ethnicity. Islam is for you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah. Because I had a job to read that on Arabic. Mm-hmm. Okay. And also in terms of now, some of the points Abdul Latif is mentioning challenges wise, challenges, being a Muslim coming up to a year, Alhamdulillah, what have been the major, the major challenges for you in this regard? Ramadan was, was not easy for me. I've so I'm still got a few days, but I rung you, didn't I? I asked, I said, <laughs> if I need to, if I need to take a tablet or do yeah, yeah. something like that, like yeah, what, yeah. like, you know, because I feel it in my heart. Mm-hmm. Like it's the the connection that me and God have got that like it's 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 a beautiful thing. But when you do something wrong, you feel it deep down. I feel it like so. If I was to take a tablet on Ramadan like that, that means something to me that I've missed today. But it made me feel so much better speaking to you and you saying to me, "No, you can make up for those days." Yeah, just before the next Ramadan, which I will make sure I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Like I say, I'm I'm living evidence that you can be any colour or any race that you yeah. want. Like, it makes sense. And if it's relatable for me, I'd say it's relatable and the right way for everybody. Now, I wouldn't go around on the streets trying to ram that down people's throats, but I will, if I was asked my opinion and my advice, then I would give it. Mm, it reminds me, you know, like there was a brother taking Shahada here, named Jack, and Oli was there. Oli, Dan's, Dan's kind of like a colleague. So Oli was saying... Alf would come. He's telling Jack, he said, look, Alf would come, Hatton Garden, he's got his stove on. Yeah. And he's saying, look, there, you could see some people don't like it. I'm talking about non-Muslim. They don't like, look, what Alf's doing. Muslim, Thaw, and so on. But he would come to us and say, look, you know, it's time for prayer. Let's go and pray. You know, so there will be those who dislike. But my point, you know, in, in a kind of like, a, you know, praising you, that having that confidence, having that, you know, like sense of, look, pride, I am a Muslim. I don't feel ashamed to kind of like let the world know this is my faith. Yeah, and why would that be as well? Why why so much confidence in this? Because when so once I took my shahada, I appreciated everything a lot more. Now that was because you asked what the challenges was. There there's been so much more upsides than. If there's any downsides, like realistically, people look and say, oh, having to starve yourself for a month. Yeah, I don't enjoy that, but I will do it because it's a a sacrifice I like to make to make myself feel better and say thank you for God for giving me a beautiful body, a mind of my own. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, what the confidence, because if if I make a decision, I'm my own man. I'm 25 years old now. If I make a decision or I say something, I stand by it. Okay. And it doesn't matter what other people have got to say about it. I feel good. I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. By going to pray, you feel beautiful. Yeah. I think your one is, our journey is, is, is very unique. Why I say this, many people take shahada. Yeah. In, in a mos- I mean, sister just took shahada just mm-hmm. before English sister. One of the questions she asked, are there any white Muslims? She came all the way from Dagenham. I said, well, have you heard of Alfie Best? She said, yeah. I said, look, he's here. And let me bring him in to kind of like just speak to you. When I came out, you had gone, but then Danny came in. So she said, she spoke to Danny for a while. But you know what? Some some individuals, they're coming because they're struggling. Mm. They're struggling. This Life's a struggle. It's test. Yours is unique because from a worldly sense, Allah's blessed you with it so much. You know, I don't really need to look into Islam to kind of like benefit from the worldly sense. It can only be faith. Mm. Because someone help me in my worldly sense, I've got what I've got. I've got my business, my businesses and so on. So it's the faith, spiritual, spirituality side that I'm going to benefit from. That's unique. And a lot of people in your kind of like situation, maybe not a lot, a lot of best, but, but some, they would say, look, I don't need faith now. Yeah? Allah in the Quran, in fact, he says, some people have given them so much of a world, it's actually a punishment for them. Because it will distract them from coming towards faith. Whereas you, you know what, you've, sacrifice that, say, look, I've got all of this, but for the sake of Allah and my faith and real Islam, I'm going to take the shahada. When you take a step back and look at it, 
without Allah, I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't have nothing. It's the very least that I can do mm. to make myself feel good through the course of a day, through the course of a week. So that's why I try my utmost best. It's, it's, it's also the brain that God has given me. I try the best at whatever I can do. So I want... I want to be the best Muslim I can, and I would like to. To I'd like to. I. It makes me feel good to see when other people have reverted because I, I'm thinking like you don't realise how good of steps you have just made in the right direction. Like you, you don't know it yet, mm-hmm. but you have just helped yourself massively. You know, like sure. there's going to be tests come regardless of what religion you are, anyways. Mm-hmm. And yes, you're going to be tested. No, it might not be easy, mm-hmm. but for me. I just, I wouldn't want to. Yeah, I mean, if somebody asked my life advice, it's actually quite simple now. I'd say, Have you read the Quran? Mm. You know, I'd start there. Mm. Come on, Muslim. You know? You, be the, you know those mentors that give you different kind of things it, to say, like, like, I'll be your mentor. Read the Quran. Read the Quran. Take the Shahada. Start your prayers. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. It's just a simple pill. The yeah. question is so, with regards to, because you brought it up just now, with regards to test, so mm-hmm. you're Muslim. How do you deal with test different now? Because obviously Islam talks about yeah. patience and sacrifice and mm-hmm. gratitude and maybe holding down your mouth and holding down your fist and whatever that is. Whereas prior to that, maybe you would have like, how how has that changed for you? Mm-hmm. And I saw one about your 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 your, your watch is different now, something like that. Because yeah, Islam I, I talks don't about gold. I, in the Quran, it tells, says that men shouldn't wear gold and silk. Yeah, yeah. So same before you had lots of silk, yeah. <laughs> wow, well, do you know what? I I had probably had more gold than I'd silk. <laughs> but um uh sorry, ask that question. So it was about the test. So the test prior to Islam and how you deal with it after Islam now. Like how would how has that changed when it comes to you being involved in a test? Because you said sometimes you might some get some tests, you know. How Always you but I, th- I think we we're, we're tested most days, but now I am thankful that I've got air in my lungs and I'm alive. If something goes right, you're more conscious great. of that. But it's, it's being thankful to be alive, and when you take it for granted and being thankful of it are two completely different things. When you take a step back, like if you had a near death experience, mm. you're like, "Wow, I'm just thankful to be alive." Mm. Like when Ramadan, you're just so grateful to eat. Yes. But it's the same when you have a test to put in front mm-hmm. of you. If it goes well, great. You take a step back and go, "I'm alive." Yeah, Mashallah, I'm alive. Yeah, yeah. So it gives you a lot more consciousness, basically, you would say. Exactly. You're more conscious exactly. of it, whereas before it might be, it's a test, I pass it or not pass it. You don't even think about it as a test, you just think of it as well, a like, hurdle. Well, to be or honest, you, you, I'd probably be disappointed and upset with myself. Yeah. But I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Mm. Now I'm, I'm alive. Correct. So it's out, well, exactly. Mm. Thankful for what you've got. I'm eating, I'm living, I'm breathing. Mm. There's air in my lungs, my family's all good. Mm. These are free things. Exactly. It doesn't need money. Exactly. One thing else, so, you know, a lot of people take shahada and sometimes people say to them, look, you know what, you've taken your shahada, but the Muslim community, they were happy when you took shahada, but they didn't give you the support that you needed. So question for you in terms of since that September, shahada, of course, you've got mates that are close, Danny and others. Have you found the support from them and others from the Muslim community? Concerning your faith, anything you need in the faith, any assistance, any help, any guidance, you want to go to Mecca or Medina, they've assisted you or they will assist you. How did you find that? Um, well, as a community of people, and I've been around a lot of communities, I've never felt so welcomed and so loved by some people that I've never even met. Mm-hmm. That's sure the not. only way I can explain that. Yeah, just sincere kindness for exactly, the sake of exactly. that wanting to help you just because they want to help you not because there's any gain yeah. not because there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow yeah. they're looking to help because yeah, yeah. their intentions are good yeah and I've never been around I've been around people that are like that yeah. but I've never been around a community of people mm. that are all like that mm. you haven't had some Muslims saying Akhi you know I heard you become Muslim so you're saying run me some change Akhi not yet <laughs> <laughs> not yet You have to give some sadaqah to us <laughs> no, Not yet <laughs> but Actually, you know, There's a hadith isn't it No uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad said oh, Peace be upon him There'll be seven types of people 
that will be under the shade of Allah's throne on the day of judgment when there'll be no shade except the shade that Allah provides. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of those types that Prophet Muhammad mentioned, two individuals who only love one another, one another for the sake of Allah. They don't want anything back. Yeah? I'm loving you because you're a Muslim. You're loving me because you're a Muslim. I don't need no gain and you don't need anything from me. Mm. And alhamdulillah, you know, sometimes we we do see the negative, mm. you know, because we're part of the Muslim community. So there will be those elements. The vast majority, like you mentioned, Alfie, they're just like happy. This brothers are Muslim. Absolutely. And they pray for you. You know, so many people messaged me when you've taken shahada and all they're doing is praying for you. May Allah bless him. May Allah reward him. May Allah keep him happy. May Allah keep him steadfast mm. for you and your family. Mm. You know, family, sometimes through you, they get into du'as of people. Mm. Yeah, because they're saying, oh, Alfie's become a Muslim. May Allah bless his family. Mm. May Allah bless his mom. May Allah bless his dad. Just because, you know, yeah. so in fact, they're getting blessings and benefit True. just by, you know, you coming to the deeds. Uh, that's a positive, alhamdulillah. Cool. So another aspect, obviously, you've been Muslim now. What you're obviously very well known for is being a business person. Run us through your businesses. Like, what is it that you do as a business? Oh. Um, I buy and sell tickets for events. I've done that more or less all my life. Okay. I buy and sell watches, and I've just got uh, I've got two mobile home parks. Okay, much like you started that as well, yeah. My, well, it's my dad's industry, but it's a it's a it's a long story. Um, You're going to be competing with him. Uh, I don't like to compete. I listen. <laughs> I want to see him go as uh, uh, it's healthy competition. What kind of questions are you saying, asking me? Trying to cause a rift between uh, him and his dad. It's a healthy business. Actually. Healthy competition. Um, you compete with your dad. <laughs> well, what's what, doing your purposes? It's not like no, you're going I mean, to Jannah for it. Um, but the, I had a. I got a couple of mobile home sites when I was sixteen or seventeen, and because okay, I, yes. I had a nightclub, I've got the where business is concerned. Um, I've Good. probably gone from start to finish. There's probably not a lot I haven't done. I've worked since I've been in school. Okay. And was that also pushed by your dad to just go straight? No, I've never really, listen, looking at my dad, my dad's been a very, a bit, very, very big role model in my life, to, to especially to look up to, and especially where he's so successful. Of course. Because like, somebody as successful as him, you know, whether they're right or whether they're wrong, I would always look at him like he's right because look what you've achieved. Yeah. Um. But did he guide you saying, look, son, don't go school, don't go college, start your own business? Or was it? Yeah, absolutely, abso absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, um, he saw the benefits of you going, uh, there might be some kids watching this, you know what, dad, <laughs> watch the be best, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting my own business, forget college or uni. So was it like that or was it just? Well, com coming, out, coming out of school was just right for me. And you, you uh, didn't the, like the travelling community, because obviously I'm a traveller. Of course. That's the dumb thing. To come out of school and start working. Mm, that's just what everyone does. No one does the whole college thing. Uni. Well, very, very, 5%, okay. if that. Mm. But times are changing. Amazing thing. So just when you were talking and reflecting on the companions of Prophet Muhammad, companions are like disciples, all the different, you know, where the, the Bible might say that Jesus had just a few, maybe 12 disciples. The companions, the number is a large number in thousands. But Allah chosen to be with Prophet Muhammad. And mainly they divided into two. Yeah, one were farmers, people of Medina, and the other group was the migrants who came from Mecca, settled in Medina, but they were the traders. And it was an amazing uh, migrant by the name of Abdurrahman bin Auf, came from Mecca to Medina, and he met a guy and a guy's a companion, and, and he said, look, you know, I'll share my wealth with you. Take half, I'll keep half. He said, no, show me the marketplace of Medina. Went to the marketplace, became one of the millionaires of not the companions and the Muslims in Medina. Saying this, that's one of the things of, in Islam. Everybody can have a skill and use it in a right way. Mm. It can be business. Yeah. Not, not everybody has to go to school and university and become, you know, what, a professor or a lecturer or a teacher. Everybody can do something as long as it's the halal thing mm. and it can please Allah through it also. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts with regards to the whole kind of school or business instead then? What do you mean? School path or business path? Because obviously you've done well for yourself business-wise, but then obviously there's the school path and there's there, there's definitely a big shift nowadays, I'll say, towards many people, even so-called businessmen pushing youngsters and saying, look, you don't need to go uni, go and do apprenticeship or start your own business. For you, would you still advocate and say, yeah, business is the way forward or is it advocation now? Go and get your school knowledge and become a doctor, a surgeon or whatever it might be. 
Well, let me put it to you like this. This is my advice and this is how I see things. If you make, start a business, right? If you start a business and that business is making £40,000 a year clear profit, right? £40,000 a year. Now, would that be minimum wage? I don't know what minimum wage is. That would be above minimum wage. Right, that's above minimum wage. Yeah. Right, so let's just say minimum wage. Do you know what minimum wage is? Because I don't. You yeah. know why he knows? Because he pays his workers minimum wage. It's all subject. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> We're not talking about wages here. <laughs> you might, yeah, stick to the script. <laughs> We're talking about profits here. Anyway, I think it's like 24,000 or something like that. Right, 24, 24 or... 24,000. Now, now, now you're safe to go and get a job because a job, but if you go to work now, for example, you could go do your day's work, you're getting paid £50. Mm-hmm. For example, mm-hmm. now don't 80 quote me, whatever, whatever it may be. If you set up a business, yeah, okay, you're running at a risk, mm-hmm. right? But in reality, you're going to work it until there's no such thing as a bad business, just bad management, mm. right? That's as simple as that. Or you haven't made it work, but this would be my advice. If you've got a business making minimum wage, so let's say £35,000 a year, mm. argument's sake, minimum wage, clear profit. Not only have you earned £35,000 clear, you have now got a little bit of time for yourself when you want to go to work. Mm. So the benefits come with the time you're going to save, not the money you're going to earn. Mm. Now that's the way I see it. Mm. Oh, I hear it that. comes with a little, bit, a little bit of freedom. Now some people would rather just, 100% go to school, go through the the hamster wheel, mm. I call it, come out, get a job, pay mm. wages. Now, I'd, I'd, I don't believe that's the right way. That wouldn't be right for me. Yeah, yeah. Keep in mind, ability, everybody's different. Mm. Remember, you need doctors, though. Of course. You need nurses. Yeah. You need teachers. Yeah, there's some things you, you need, need uni for. You need carpenters. You need everybody's... You don't have to uni for carpentry. So no, carp- you can just you, come doesn't have to be uni, but <laughs> minimum wage, though, yeah? Minimum, minimum wage. That's the, minimum minimum the starting point is minimum wage, lads. You only get rich for minimum wages, so that's how it works. Better be working for Alfie, man. He's minimum wage is 40 grand. like, minimum wage is about 40 grand, right? I'm like, yeah, it is, actually. Pay me 40 racks. But yeah, and... I hear you. And you know what? My perspective is similar because I come from the angle of historically, just like Imam gave the story of Abdurrahman bin Auf. This is how he was. This is how human beings have made money in the past. There was no such thing as go to uni. And it wasn't like that. It was family worked within families. And that's all it was. Family will work with families, whether it's farming, whether it's business, whether it's trading. And they will increase within that profit within themselves and grow. This whole idea of a university, getting a degree and then working for another company that another human being owns, for me, is is, is, is crazy. Because uh, say, same same principle. It's not how. Look, look when, they, when they're working for you and, and you're teaching them. Who? When somebody works for Alfie, yeah. of course, Alfie's going to kind of educate them mm. in a way of doing business. Mm. It's just a smaller scale. Add that now, it's a school. So instead of 40 people, you're going to have 400 people. Mm. Yeah. Make it a bigger scale. You want to advance in certain sciences or certain things, go to university, you're going to have a few thousand people. Mm. It's the same principle. And so in those early days, the need was the family educate how to do a business, how to do farming. Mm. But I don't think it's against going to school or stuff. It's not against no, the principles. The, 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 the point I'm making is this, 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 this group narrative, the family cares for you. Yeah. When I'm within a family, my dad cares for me, my uncle cares for me, my mom cares for me. The government system we have don't care for you. So they, they, they're they making you go to school, then you go to college, then you go to uni. You find that most people that go to uni still do McDonald's or Morrison's. So the ends doesn't justify the means to get there is my point. Whereas as a business owner from a very young age, I'm not, and again, I'm not advocating every person becomes a business owner. Of course, you do need a surgeon. There's certain skills that a whole society needs a surgeon and I don't know, a pilot or whatever it might be. It's a pilot over there. Yeah. Certain things you, you need to go uniform because if we didn't, we couldn't fly around the world. If you had a issue in your body, you can't go to a doctor. You need certain things. You don't need to go uni to become an artist, mm. to draw. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Just start a business, learn under someone. And then that's how the apprenticeship scheme used to work in back in the day. Mm. You learn under someone and slowly you get paid. Do you know what I'm trying to say? When you said a point about and working for someone else and the business is the risk. I see the same, actually. Having your own business and that risk, because remember, I have to pay people, right? 
I pay people before I think of even paying myself. That's how my one is run. Whereas sure man, that, yeah. I'm smiling. You sure about that, yeah. oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but as a business, another guy you're working for now, which is say someone like me, he's taking the same risks. So you're still hoping it's, it's like we've put this human being as in some godly, like I'm, if I work my five to five, five days a week, I'm going to get paid regardless. That's how you're thinking as a worker, regardless of what happens, I'm going to get paid. But as a business owner, it's the same. It's the same effort. I have to put in every single day to get money. I don't know where my money's coming from. Then I have to pay my workers. But if tomorrow money doesn't come, I have to sack my workers. It's just that this person, so the point you made with, it's not a bad business, it's the bad business management. That's all it is. So this youngster who's afraid to start his own business, it's just because you're scared to lose. You're scared to manage your business. You don't know how to run it. But how do you overcome all of that? You'd be as successful as any Tom, Dick and Harry out there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that makes you any different from the Tom Fords or... The the, the 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 billionaires of today, nothing. It's just he took a risk. You're taking a similar risk, really, but you're just thinking this guy is some god that's going to give you your money. That's my kind of angle with the whole mm -hmm. union and, and work thing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, Alf, inshallah, in terms of from a Muslim perspective, what do you see your role as a Muslim? Yeah. In what sense? In the sense of, do you see yourself as, you know what, Promoting Islam, making Islam, how do you say, to the masses. I know Danny, 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 since he took Shahada, maybe 10, 12, you know, brothers, sisters have come through him, taking the Shahada at the masjid. Do you see yourself as, look, you know what, I need to make people understand Islam. We might call it Dawah. Dawah means you're promoting Islam. Do you see that your role, like an ambassador, an ambassador of Islam? He does a bit of that, to be fair, but maybe not like, well, like a chef, of, but more of, like how you wear your clothes. Of, and of, of. <laughs> I believe my role in Islam is to be the best Muslim that I can possibly be. Anybody that wants to ask advice, I'm not the best person, but I will point them in the right direction because as it stands at the moment, I'm the person looking for advice uh, 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 in Islam. But the better I do, the more people are going to look and think, wow. Where is he getting that from? You know, that's, that's what I look to do. That's what I believe my role is or should be. Now, I'm not the best, but... What I can tell you is I do try my best. Mm. And that's the best part, Fakhi. There's a story of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he's uh, he's walking with this woman and this woman, you know, she picks, he's picking up her bag, he walks with her and she's backbiting him and she's saying many things about Muhammad, but she doesn't know that this man that's holding her bags is Muhammad. And she's saying this man is like this and he's come to divide the nation and all of this stuff. And uh, why are you smiling here? Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, Abdul Latif will uh, narrate stuff. And somebody will then uh, message me or call me. Uh, Imam, can you make sure that's authentic, that Abdul Latif is right? So I'm just, just I'm saying, just make sure this is authentic stuff it's here. It's authentic. Because, you know, I get the heat. It's authentic, uh, Imam gets the heat. It's usually. authentic. If not, bro, resilient leader page me, we talk. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and he was walking with the, the, the lady. And towards the end, anyway, when he stopped at the location that obviously she was going to stop at, he gave her her bags. And he said, look, I forgot to ask, like, what's your name? Because my name is Muhammad. And this is the same person, obviously, she was back by and all this time. So the point I'm making with that story is, is that it's due to his characteristics that a lot of people become Muslim today. Just his, his akhlaq, how he dealt with people. Like if you see someone in a mosque, there's a story that someone's being in a mosque. The companions want to go and beat up that person. He says, no, leave him, let him finish. Now, if that happened in this mosque and we got our imam, it might be a different story. But <laughs> that companion... You had to get back to me. I had to get back no, to you, no, of no, course. No, no. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can see his character, like, he understood the human beings. He understood how to, when to fight, when not to fight, when to be kind, when not to be kind. Like people think you can only be kind all your life as a prophet. No, he, there was times he wouldn't be kind and say, look, it's time to fight. When there was wars, there will be times that he's at the front all the way. People are chasing him down and he's leading the whole thing. And there'll be times he's behind and telling people where to go. So I think from the perspective of that, that's probably the best way in life is that through your characteristics, rather than I'm telling you what to do or what not to do, just I show you by my characteristics. I'm kind, I'm nice, I fight when I need to fight, but I'm humble when I need to be humble. Through that, people say, you know, what's this guy's path like? Oh, he's a Muslim, oh, let, me, let me look into Islam. And that sometimes is sufficient. You don't even need to just proclaim and stand in the pulpit and do any of that stuff. You just... What are you smiling for? Ah, huh? <laughs> what? I'm just smiling actually. <laughs> do you get what I mean? So I think that's the best path and may Allah, you know, preserve you for that, help you in that I mean, and, and, I mean. and make your role model inshallah like that. Moving forward, as we spoke about your father, we didn't get much into your father. So I'm guessing your father is a very important person in your life. 
Of course. You've spoken and kindly about him. How is his relationship with you in a sense of father figure? And I'm bringing it up for, again, the youth of today. Father, father figure is a very big issue today. The fact that you had a mother and a father in your household, how did that help you? And maybe even from another perspective, how would life be without your father? Have you ever thought about that? Of course I have. I don't like to think about it, but of course I have. I'd imagine that it would be... I'd miss him an awful lot, of course I would. Um, but it's a, it's a hard question for me to answer because Dang I man. don't want to take myself to that place. Of course, you understand course, what course, course. From? But there's a lot of people that's been raised without fathers. Mm-hmm. And so I bring up this topic from the perspective of the benefit of having a father in your house. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's been a massive bet. My dad in general to anybody, whether he may be your dad, just a friend or somebody you watch on YouTube, he's a massive benefit, very intelligent. Mm. Uh, been around the block, you could say. Uh, and my relationship with music. Are you, are you the oldest? Are you the oldest son? No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the youngest, actually. The youngest? There's only two of us. Okay, only two. Okay. Uh, I've got a sister. Okay. Mm. Um, How was father like at home? Like what was the father relationship, son relationship that... Again, viewers can benefit from. Was it a train you hard from a very young age? Was it a no, actually do what you like from a very young age? Was it no, never, fed? was it never, never, ever, ever, ever? It's actually been not hard at all because are you caught hard not having food on the table, not being able to eat? You know, it's never been like that. Mm. I've always ate my whole life, but nothing was ever given. Everything had to be earned. Mm. I'm not talking about food, but I'm talking about anything that I've got my own self. Never has he put his hand in his pocket. Now, advice, no problem. He he, he will sit and talk all the time I'm willing to listen. Mm. The minute that he sees me that I'm not listening or not interested, not interested, or if he's told me something and I go and make the mistake, what he told me not to do, then he's not so inclined to tell me. But we've got a good, it's not a good cuddling and kissing relationship is too alpha mouse mm-hmm. <laughs> that's looking to try and but get you know he loves life. you sorry but you know he actually loves you that's not yes, like yes absolutely abso- of course I'm his only well, son some people will say like we've had this discussion before that if your dad doesn't you, you know we said about last time if you're, some people their dad hasn't said I love you too before his way of showing me love is giving me business advice mm. and I understand that yeah yeah that's him doing a good thing mm, mm. telling me the right thing to do and uh, and how to go how to money. move mm. Mm, mm. the cool. times he's had what well, the mistakes he's made that's his way of showing love and affection yeah 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 and, and you know probably he probably had a big um you know vision for you mm. in following his footsteps because he named you Alfie Best of course you know, you got every best senior, every best junior, which is you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did he did he plan for you to take on take over his industry, his business? Was that uh, again? It's not something we've we've ever really sit and spoke about. The only thing we sit and talk about is me creating and doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever comes in the future, I don't know. Of course, no. he wants to make you your just like you'd want to be your own man. He wants you to, and that's, that's every parent's wish. Really, you want that son, that daughter to stand in their own two feet once they pass away. Because mm. you're basically passing on the baton and saying, look, you're taking over now. Okay, short term. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So from a young age now, could you see that he was doing that? that maybe he was boxing, for example. Did he start with, you, with that? Uh, this is, um, or is that like a no, community no, 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 thing no, like no, the Gypsy? Like, yeah, but amongst the travelling community, it's the dumb thing. Okay. Like, like, amongst travellers, I've done a lot by the book, you could call it. I come out of school when I was young, I used to box. Mm. I used to mix with most people. Not really, never went out for the first 10 or 15 years of my life. I didn't really go outside the travelling community. Okay. Like that? Yeah. I didn't know that. So how how was discipline like that then? Did he discipline you a lot? Obviously you had a dog. Boxing taught me a lot of discipline more than, more so than my dad. Yeah. He's a very, he's a very, he's a very hard man. Mm. That he didn't take no rubbish? No, absolutely not. Still wouldn't to this day. Mm. I think one it's thing credit to him off is look... You've taken shahada, become a Muslim, been a Muslim nearly coming, you know, for a year now. For him to maybe not know Islam, but to say, look, that's my son's decision. He's taken it. I'm still supporting him as my son and I'm proud of him. That That's a credit to him. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It respects the judgment, isn't it? If he probably saw you as a off the head kind of person, lost, confused already as it is, and then became Muslim, 
he might think a bit different. Mm. But if you know that your son already is making right decisions, a certain t- he's maybe got the right friends and he's t- taken on a path, like you said, he used the word of enhanced, that he understood this only enhanced you because he didn't obviously see you as a bad person in the mm-hmm. first place. He was really good. He was already making the right decisions, business-wise or whatever it might be. So, no, just to bring up the topic of fatherhood, I think today's uh, world, the fatherhood issue is a big problem. Hence why we have, you know, fatherless uh, families. You've got mums just raising one child by themselves. Then that child, because there's no discipline, ends up in the streets once, and roads. Once again, sorry to interrupt you, but you've just brought me back to a point which I would like to touch base on. When you said, well, it's something you relate on mm. in the Quran. Well, that's another thing where it tells you to have not have sex before marriage. Well, that's a perfect look how many more children would be in a perfect position if everybody lived by that. Mm. Now, see, I said when you, like, there's things that will just ping into my head. And I thought that at the time. Like, you think, why would you want to not have sex before marriage? Mm -hmm. You know, to be honest, everybody would think, what a nightmare that is. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? That in reality, you would. But when you break it down and look at and look at and the issues, the reasons, and exactly the problems that will come with it, everybody just going to have sex with everybody. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, it does sound great. But come back nine months later. Mm, mm, there's no responsibility. There's no responsibility. One hundred percent. Even on that topic itself, I think when the whole liberal mindset came, obviously the the pill that solved their problem, which is you can have sex, mm. you just take a pill. But then the man also thinks that it's okay to do that now. And so now you have a society where the man and the woman literally think they're the same. The woman doesn't think she can get pregnant because she can take one pill and she has no baby. So she can act how the man probably used to act without no... Because remember, there's many men that wasn't spiritual many years back, Mm. especially within the Western world, that feel like they can sleep with whoever they want to sleep with and there's no repercussions. But now the woman has been given the same tool, basically. You can take this pill... And with this pill, you won't get pregnant. And then you have this mindset now of masculinity, femininity. Cool. But, but troubling community, they, they have kind of like certain standards and morals. They're more traditional people. Which are very kind of like close to Islam. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, that's, and, and, and if you were to say that, look, the, the man's a breadwinner, the man kind of like supports the family, mm. the women look after the home. That's Islam. Mm. I always have this debate. I mean, sometimes we have that discussion. Mm. It doesn't have to be this or that. Solution is Islam. Apply that in a practical way, mm. you know, and, and that's, and if Alfie's saying that, look, you know what, whatever Islam says, we need to go with that. Okay, that's a solution and, mm. and that it should be. Mm. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, from our perspective, we're not part of any isms, feminism, masculinism, and whatever the isms are, it's Islam. And Islam is usually in between everything anyways, the middle path, as Allah says in the Quran, that this path is the middle path. It's not extreme on this side, nor is it extreme on another side. It's not too fluffy, nor is it too you know, strenuous or strong or, you know what I mean? You, you always try to take the middle path. But Khair, I think we've gone to the hour kind of conversation, final kind of uh, notes. You are where you are today. Hmm. You know, you've become a man, you've become an inshallah, you become a better person as you keep growing. But there's many youth obviously watching this, looking at your name, Alfie Best, Rich, you know, Muslim. How would you advice those youngsters looking up to you and saying, you know what, they want to become like you or your type of, you know, ilk? Follow your dean. Mm. Because that's what took me to my next step. Mm. That's what pushed me further. And that's what made, I'd like to say made, life's not easy, it's far from easy, but it made it easier. easier. It's as easy as you believe that it is. And, mm. you know, it settled my mind beautifully, you know. So I'd start there. Start with your dean first. Yeah. Because you obviously didn't have that You had obviously a father figure or whatever But since you've become Muslim You're saying that has propelled you Absolutely A bit more It's just made everything feel so it made every, It's a feeling And it's made everything feel so much easier mm. Made me want to do more What I have missed It's fine mm. And prior to that They will say Well but you already had a good life I had a beautiful life mm. So why beautiful. not just keep it like that They will probably think Because there's many youngsters As you know Instagram is just full of it driving the right cars on holidays and sh-sh-sh-sh. well I was out I, before I was Muslim obviously I used to drink obviously I used to go out mm. partying so it would you know it's not that I want to say that that's the right way but I was going and I enjoy myself more now as a Muslim doing less mm. if that makes sense yeah of course like I enjoy my life now more doing less than when I did before that. yeah mm. and it makes like I say 
what I'm doing easier. Okay. But it's crazy because everyone chases that. Mm. Everyone chases what you're saying you've left. <laughs> That's the crazy part is you're saying this, someone might watch it, but still in their brain, they think you're lying to them. They think you're trying to, you know, hold the gate and say, nah, you know, it's not fun there, but it is, it is really fun there. Does that make sense? I, I've, had it, some, I've had some fun. But what I'm telling you is I enjoy myself more mm. by doing less. Mm. Like there's, you know, I appreciate going for a nice meal, opening the fast at Ramadan. Mm. Oh, my God. Looking, waiting for the clock to count down to get a mouthful of water in your mouth. Mm. That's enjoyment. Just the simple thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like a glass of water. You are literally looking at the clock like that. Oh, my God, waiting. Do you know what? There was days I even had water. Like, I'm looking at it like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Looking at it. Just waiting. Ready to, like, honestly, I was ready to pounce on it. Not the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that last minute. Seems like an hour, isn't it? Oh, God. <laughs> just waiting for that last If there was a clock in the room, you'd be counting, I'm telling you. I'm saying that off in terms of, I mean, one thing is they haven't experienced. They're seeking that, but they haven't experienced that, what, my point. What, what Alfie's that's got my in terms point. of Islam. Yeah, exactly. But Alf, you know, Allah's bless you with wealth. Do you see a contradiction in being a good Muslim and, let's say, being wealthy? And that's, again, for the viewers. Can you be a wealth, wealthy, rich person and be a good Muslim? Yeah, more for the, what do you think? From the- Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think it's easier if you've got wealth to be a good person. It's easy. It's easy to have morals when you've got money in your pocket and food on the table. Now, I say that straight as it is because you've got everything. Think about when you've got to go and feed a family. That's when you start questioning and thinking about your morals. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, deep. In fact, scholars had a discussion, who's a better Muslim, a rich Muslim or a poor Muslim? And they said the rich Muslim, yeah, we're talking about financial wealth, who is grateful to Allah, uses his or her wealth in the right way, is better than a poor one. Because now if Allah's given you more, you can actually do more. Mm. It does a good deeds and charity and so on. So yeah, no, no, alhamdulillah, man. Mm, I think that's a good note to finish on. Jazakumullah khair for, 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 for um, giving us your time. You know, like we said before, Allah bless your wealth. You know, inshallah, do well with it. And uh, yeah, akhi, barakallahu feek. And to everyone else watching, we'll catch you in the next one. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.